there's a diverse set of alkyne reactions, just like you saw with alkenes. There's not as many as I said, but generally this is what happens. It's an addition reaction. So we say here that like alkynes, alkene, al like alkenes, alkynes undergo addition reactions because they contain weak pi bonds. So they're electron rich. And what happens is you have to be aware of one thing before you start writing the product is you have to look at the amount of the reagent given to you. So it says here that an addition of one equivalent of reagent, so just one mole, forms an alkene, as you see here, this is one equivalence. And if you add another equivalent, that's going to be the second equivalent. So both of these is two equivalents will produce now an alkane, of course, with whatever substituents are now added. So in this case could be an, um, a halide, an alkyl halide. But now you actually have four new bonds if you go through the full two equivalents of, <clears throat> of course, of the reagent. So this should make sense to you that, you know, you break only one pi bond. And then when you have another equivalence, you break the last pi bond in the alkene. So think of it as this is um, going from alkyne to alkene and then, you know, alkene going to the alkane, just like we saw in the last chapter. So what is hydrohalogenation? So of course, this is the addition just like you saw here, the addition of HX. And of course, this could be HBr, could be HCl or HI. Very well. So suppose you have, start with this generic reaction. Let's say we have HBr. And generally, this one is used in this solvent, carbon tetrachloride. So if you do one equivalence of this, you will get the alkene. So as I said, this is the alkene. And then of course, if you do another equivalence, you will finally have all single bonds. Now, be aware of one fact is that this follows Markovnikov's rule <clears throat> where the Br is attached to the more substituted carbon. And then of course the H goes with a carbon that's less substituted or, the, or with more Hs. So what you make here is you make a geminal dihalide. Now this could be written, by the way, this entire reaction can be written as HBr two equivalents. Or it could be written as two HBr or two moles molar, etc. You are aware that that's speaking about the concentration. And if that is the case, then you have to go all the way to the 
fully substituted product. If it's given only one equivalence, then you would stop right here. So again, this is one equivalence. And again, this is the last equivalence. So if you have one equivalence, you stop here. If you have two equivalents, you stop at the end. So again, that's for the two equivalents. Let's look at the mechanism. <clears throat> so suppose I have And again, this is the generic mechanism, so it is going to apply to the other uh, me uh, other mechanisms. So I'm talking about if you vary the alkyne. So if you have an example, then the same mechanism applies. Of course, we have a different uh, starting material. So the first step is the protonation put the and now we get let's actually vary this slightly here just to make it So we're following Markovnikov's rule here, in a sense. And now we have our <clears throat> carbocation here. Of course, now Br has a negative charge on it. Therefore, going to attack the carbocation, the carbon with a carbocation. Now imagine, <clears throat> so this is after one equivalence. Now imagine we have two equivalents. So then you repeat the reaction and you follow again Markovnikov's rule. There's no double bond, it's gone. And of course, lastly is again, the bromine is going to attack the carbocation reaching full substitution right here. So this is a full addition reaction. Very well. So if I were to give you an example of this, so if I say HBr two equivalents. then this whole thing is going to be substituted. So once again, make sure you're able to count, you're able to count. So this would be your carbon one, that's two, three, and four. So you have four carbons here, one, two, three, and four. So we know that we draw, if it's full substitution, 
we draw R4, both of those bromine atoms will add to the second carbon according to Markovnikov's rule right here. Very well. The second reaction is halogenation. And in this case, you have, of course, PR2 or Cl2. And once again, be careful of the amount. So if you have two equivalents, then you will get the following. So that's after two equivalents. If it's only one equivalence, just saying Br2, it's not gonna tell you one equivalence because it's there's only one mole of that, then you would actually get the following. So this is one equivalence. What is the mechanism for that? Let's look at it. So I'm going to just simply put methyls here rather than just the R groups to make it more relevant. Although again, you can have whatever groups can be attached here, any alkyl groups. So let's say we have Br2 and it's two equivalents. Again, you can have a solvent such as CCL4. Anything on the bottom in these reactions is going to be a solvent. Once again, if it's two equivalents, then I will have this as a product. So this is completely brominated right here. Now, the mechanism is similar to the alkene mechanism with the bromination. So let's look at the mechanism. If you recall from the alkenes, that the mechanism proceeds by the triple bond in this case, one of the pi bonds attacks the bromine, forms a bond, the bromine with its one of its lone pairs attacks one of the carbon atoms and of course this breaks the bond between the bromine atoms so what it does is that it forms something similar to what you've seen before So this is a brominium bridge, the positive charge. 
And of course you have the bromine out, one of the bromine atoms. So as you have predicted, you would, now the bromine would attack breaking this brominium bridge. Making the alkene with the bromine atoms. So once again, notice how in this one, the bromines are, I need that back. So the bromine atoms are on different carbons due to the mechanism. Notice how the dead mechanism makes a difference here. Of course, the reaction would proceed same way if you have two equivalents. I'm redrawing it, although we know we did this in the last chapter with alkenes. But once again, it's important. So again, the attack proceeds this way. right here. Very well. So again, if you have two equivalents, you're going to add, in this case, four bromine atoms. So to give you a, a simple example before we stop and then you'll go to the next video. is if you have the same one we were talking about. And let me go back. I'll just look at it again. It was this one, correct? Yeah. Just one to make sure it was the one, same one. So if we use this, with again, bromine two equivalents. Then you would have two bromine atoms on along on each of the carbons where the triple bond was. So you would have one there and of course one there. If it was one equivalence, then you would have a bromine and a bromine like that. So that's one equivalence. Very well, make sure you practice of these, you have enough of these, uh, and uh, we'll do the next one in the next video.